Well, you, you alluded to a couple of things you would do if, if you know, to try to, to find some money, but are there actual areas where major cuts ought to occur, not just, you know, freezes or rescissions or that sort of thing? I mean, what, what are the opportunities in terms of federal spending for a Congress if it were yeah. truly fiscally conservative? Uh, well, the obvious is, the obvious is earmarks, um, mm -hmm. and what that's in the context of a $3 trillion budget we're talking I, I, I've, I've heard numbers. I've not added it up myself. I've, I've heard we're talking about a few ten, tens of billions, 50, 60 billion. Uh, I think it's closer to 80 billion dollars in earmarks. Um, but that's that's a, that's the easiest place to start. Now that doesn't mean those funds go away automatically, right. but it does mean that they end up get spe getting spent on formula rather than um, by way of of, of, of pork you know, projects. But there's savings there, nonetheless. Um, the, uh, the, the answer, Vince, is not that um, it, 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 this, this, it is not, this is not so hard. It's hard to vote on it, don't get me wrong, but it's not, it, it, this is not so hard because the answer is in reducing the annual rate of growth in federal spending, not even effectuating real cuts. Now, a cut in Washington is a reduction in the rate of anticipated growth. Uh, people run around there screaming like that, it, like you've cut something. But for the rest of Americans, growing your annual budget from 3% uh, rather than 5% is not a cut. That is still a 3% increase in spending. And so um, I, I think it is just a matter of budgeting first rather than suggesting here's how I'll balance the budget by cutting this program or cutting mm -hmm. that program or the other. Um, but, my goodness, this is, a, this is a government that believes it has $50 billion to give to Africa. I, I would go back and resend most of that. Um, I, and, and, you know, what the, what they, about entitlements, though? You do have to make more systemic change, don't you, in order to yep. slow the growth long -term. there? And what, what would you do there? Uh, long term, well, with, with respect to Social Security, uh, you've, got to get, you've got to give taxpayers an option other than, uh, other than only investing in Treasury debt. Uh, which gives you less than a 1% annual rate of return on, this, on the Social Security Trust Fund. I think it, we are past time. I would, I would fold this, incidentally, I would, answer, I, I, would, I would fold this into my previous answer on things Congress should be doing right now on trying to generate more capital for the marketplace. And, uh, and that is um, the, uh, 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 those paying into Social Security that are, uh, that are expecting to receive something from the trust fund portion of their payments um, should be angry right now because their return on investment on that tr on that on their trust fund is far less. It's less than one percent, um, and even as bad as the stock market is performing today, as bad as bonds uh, bond investments are are performing <coughs> today, um, the Congress ought to allow, looking off in the future, the same kind of retirement options under Social Security as they allow for themselves with the. Um, thrift savings plan that they provide for members of Congress and federal employees, which is the option to self-direct a certain portion of that fund into, uh, fun, uh, into funds managed by the Social Security Administration, similar to, you know, indexed, indexed funds, bond funds, mm -hmm. and a variety of other funds that have the ability to not only help pretty, uh, allow more capital in the private sector than the public sector, but um, uh, give my kids a chance to achieve greater earnings on their investment than the lowest earning, which is federal debt, which is going to be paid back with, with debased dollars. Isn't that, right. isn't that something, though, that's much easier to do when you have uh, a thriving economy and, and, mm -hmm. and potentially a budget surplus because there are transition costs? I mean, you yeah. oh, aren't, yeah. there, aren't sure it's easier. for the transition sure, costs sure at a time when you've got these kinds of uh, deficits? Um, because in the short term, in short term, it actually increases the, the deficit, does it not? Oh yeah, and yeah, you're 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 right. In, in the short, well, it could, it, it could. I, it uh, um, the only reason it would increase the deficit is because that's where the federal government goes to borrow money. It doesn't have to increase the deficit if you can reduce the the rate of borrowing. Um, but uh, you've got a Congress today that doesn't mind spending five hundred billion dollars over and above what it takes in an income. Uh, so th you've got to control spending. Mm -hmm at the same time. But no, without a doubt, all solutions are easier when you've got more money coming in. However, it, it also makes, on the opposite side, it makes it far more difficult 
for the defenders of the status quo to maintain their position at a time when the economy is hurting because um, uh, because the, the cost of doing nothing is far more perilous to the economy and to the uh, solvency of the Social Security uh, Trust Fund long term than coming up with a solution that actually results in more earnings and a, and a stronger outlook. So um, um, what's, what's it's the, a comparison uh, of one versus the other. Yeah. 